This is 13 WMAZ Eyewitness News Midday. Good afternoon, I'm Carly Barnett. Thank you for joining us. Well, North Macon's Bibb County Commission seat is going to stay vacant until November. After all, the county's Board of Election voted this morning not to hold a special election next month to fill the District 1 seat. This week, Bibb County Commissioners voted to put money aside to hold that vote on May 22nd, the same day as statewide primaries, and set aside almost $20,000 to pay for it. But members of the election board today said that wasn't enough. The seat opened up last month when Gary Bechtel resigned to qualify for a General Assembly seat. So today's vote means his seat will remain open for about eight months. Yvonne Thomas was at that meeting today, and she will have more on Eyewitness News at 5 and 6. Police say a Dunwoody man led Bibb County deputies on a high-speed car chase that crossed over into Monroe County and ended in a crash. According to the Bibb County Sheriff's Office, deputies responded to a call about a man throwing rocks at the Holiday Inn Express on Harrison Road just before 1030 last night. They say officers noticed a truck speed out of the parking lot with no headlights and the suspect, Edward Smith, sped off onto I-475 into Monroe County. They say the chase reached speeds up to 110 miles per hour before deputies performed a pit maneuver. The sheriff's office says deputies found two guns in his car. One of them was stolen. Smith was injured in the crash and will be taken into custody after he is released from the hospital. And a Macon teen is in jail today after being identified on security camera footage stealing guns from Bass Pro Shops. The Bibb County Sheriff's Office says 19 year old Tylan Mullen is one of three people seen on the security cameras. The burglary happened around 10 p.m. on Tuesday at Bass Pro in North Macon. The Sheriff's Office says the man got in by prying open a window, then stole nine guns. They say they found two of those guns when Mullen was arrested. Anyone who has additional information on this case can call the Sheriff's Office at 478-751-7500. Well, it's been talked about for months now and it's finally happening. Parking meters are coming to downtown Macon by the end of next month. Macon Bibb Urban Development Director Alex Morrison says downtown Macon has not had meters since 1983 and that more than 700 meters are expected to be installed over these next two months. They'll cover more than 800 on street parking spaces in what he calls the core of downtown, an area stretching from 1st Street to MLK Boulevard. He says the meters will cost $1.25 cents per hour and visitors will be able to pay up for for up to three hours of parking. He says the project costs around $800,000 to start up, but he points out that most of that money came from a loan and none of it came from the county's general fund. Morrison says the parking meters should help increase the flow of foot traffic in downtown. The, the parking area that is publicly available is not providing that for the businesses that are here. So we're making a, a tweak in the system, which is metered parking to increase that turnover to hopefully stimulate more opportunity for business downtown. Morrison says Lanier, an Atlanta-based company, is handling the implementation of the meters. Investigators say many questions surrounding the death of CDC Dr. Timothy Cunningham might remain unanswered. The search that lasted two months ended on Tuesday night. Fishermen found the body of Timothy Cunningham in the Chattahoochee River. Investigators say dental records confirmed that it is his body. Cunningham was seen leaving work on February 12th, saying he didn't feel well. He was never seen again, but his wallet, dog, keys and car were all at home. Investigators are not sure if the drowning was accidental. So the river's not that far from his home, although the exact distance I don't know. And we do know that he was a jogger and he was wearing his favorite jogging shoes at the time that he was found. Investigators do not believe there was any foul play at this point. They do believe Cunningham's body was in the river since he went missing. And a bus driver now faces charges after a crash that injured 17 passengers traveling to Augusta National for the Masters Tournament. Stephen Hoppenbrower is charged with DUI and failure to maintain lane. Witnesses say the bus swerved and he overcorrected and flipped into the median on I-20 just about 20 minutes outside of Augusta. The bus left Suwannee around 845 yesterday morning before picking up passengers in Midtown and driving toward Augusta. The passengers injuries range from minor to critical. One passenger feels blessed to walk away. People that are absolutely in terrible, terrible shape. Uh, it's it's not just the four or five over here who have a broken back, broken ribs, multiple compound fat fractures. Considering what happened to my coach travelers and co-passengers, I mean, I am incredibly blessed 
uh, to walk away from something like this with nothing more than a cut. Georgia State Patrol says they could add more charges once their investigation is complete. Latest forecast coming up later in the show. All right, thank you, Matt. Well, if you're still looking for something for lunch, you may want to head to the Museum of Aviation in Warner Robins for the first food truck Friday of 2018. Say that three times fast. Joining us live from inside one of those trucks is Jacob Reynolds. Jacob. Well, good afternoon, Carl. And Carly, I'm going to bring you back one of these hairnets because I think they're a good look for TV. So in Warner Robins, in a food truck, I'm Jacob Reynolds. We're going to send it back to you in studio. Wow, Jacob, thank you so much. I must say, I think you wear it a little bit better than I would, and I've never met French fries I didn't like, so enjoy. Well, students at the Georgia Academy for the Blind might be a little tired today after spending last night singing the hits and getting down to some old classics, too. I think they were dressed a little better than our Jacob Reynolds as well. It was prom night for the roughly 40 high schoolers. They celebrated each other and the school senior class. Teacher Lauren Ekman says it's a night students look forward to all year long, and even though it takes a lot of planning, she says it's a joy to see the kids having fun. Mia Clemens ninth grade son Caden was one of the students out on the dance floor. It was his first prom, and she says she's already looking forward to his high school years and what they have in store. I'm excited. I'm so excited for him. I'm glad he decided to come, and I'm looking forward to his 12th grade year. He's in ninth grade, so I'm looking forward to it. See, once he's in 12th grade, she's going to be wishing he was back in 9th grade. <laughs> but as for Caden, he says he was most looking forward to the dancing and, of course, the good food. Coming up, should you be worried about where your favorite navigation app is guiding you? Well, that's the concern many are having, how you can stay safe on the roads as Eyewitness News Midday continues. Stay with us. Welcome back. There is growing concern over where navigation apps sometimes tell drivers to go. Homeowners in one Los Angeles neighborhood say Waze is creating dangers by diverting drivers onto a faster route up one of the city's steepest roads. And people who live there say it's led to a number of crashes and spinouts. Carter Evans reports. It's bumper to bumper traffic. Brookhaven, Georgia on that map. Waze says it encourages drivers to report any hazardous conditions, including steep inclines, and it often takes that information into account when Waze refines its maps. I don't know about you, Matt, but just watching them walk up that hill made me tired. I know. It well, if you're planning on doing things outside, you may want to take advantage of today and Sunday. That's tomorrow's right. tomorrow's the iffy day. Maybe yeah. you want to go to the food trucks today. There you go. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah, today's going to be fine. And, you know, tomorrow is not like a washout tomorrow, but there will be times we'll have to deal with some showers, maybe even some storms. So. Well, beautiful Friday that we can enjoy. Yeah. yeah, not too bad. We have some clouds. We'll stay dry mid upper 70s for highs tomorrow. That's when we'll have some showers, even some storms move in. There is a chance for a few strong storms. Strong winds would be the main threat. So we'll watch that for tomorrow. It's mainly going to be across coastal Georgia, I believe. So we'll watch that much cooler for Sunday. Waking up into lower 40s, highs in the mid 60s, and then talking about some smaller rain chances by the time we go into Monday into Tuesday. Well, thank you for joining us. We'll see you back here for Eyewitness News at 5, 6, and 11, and at 10 on Central Georgia CW. And the news continues now 24 7 on 13WMAZ.com. But first, a look back at the week that was. This is home, and as always, straight from the heart. Have a great Friday, everyone. Yeah, it's going down.